This is not a Game Boy. What we have here is a $50 emulation handheld that you can find from Amazon. It's a few years old now, and it features the RK3326 processor. But don't let that fool you, it can run all the way from Game Boy to PlayStation. But if you try a Commodore Amiga, this thing plays like a wet turd. So usually we'd say to skip the $50 variant and go for something closer to $100. Today what we're going to do is get this $50 handheld running Amiga at full speed. So this will turn into this. Pure gold. Or golden brown, which is the colour of the case. Welcome to Team Bandori. Subscribble. So I actually flashed the card myself, and I've got on here Rocknix. It is Rocknix 2025-0517. But I don't think it matters too much, as Amber Elic and other operating systems should be fine too. One of the main reasons why this is much slower than the 353 is obviously the specs. But what we're going to do is first tune this up. Go down to System Settings, and then go down to Enable CPU Overclock. Now this shouldn't degrade the battery life too much, as it's not overclocking all the time, it just overclocks it when it needs it. Um, if you wanted to keep it overclocked all the time, then you'd mess with some of these options at the top. So we're just going to switch that on. And also if you wanted to change the GPU drivers, uh, you can change that to Panfrost and you may get some extra FPS from that. But we're just going to keep it at Lib Mali right now. So now we're done with that, we're going to restart the system. Restarting the system will make sure that the CPU is overclocked properly, and also it'll change the GPU driver if needed. Now once the system is restarted, we can check out an Amiga game. The games I've installed here are actually WHD load versions, and that requires your Amiga to actually be a bit more powerful than normal. What you could do is use ADFs zipped up and then whack them into this folder. That should speed things up a lot, but what we want to do today is actually use these WHD load games for faster load times, and also fixes too. As per the first example, we're going to just load up Lotus Turbo Challenge 2. I'm going to hold select and tap Y, and this should give us the FPS counter at the top right. Press select again, you can see the screen. Let's just turn the volume up here. As you can hear, this is struggling somewhat. So let's just fire up a game quick. Just change to automatic gears, and then whack the game button. Ah, terrible sound again. So the FPS at the top right should have 50. If it doesn't have 50, then it's not running full speed on this emulator. It is somewhat playable, I guess, but not ideal. And one more thing we want to fix is the screen. If you notice, it's not actually filling the whole display. Tap select, and then at the top right there, there's something that says ASPR. If you boop that, it'll give you the correct resolution. You want to be using that if your screen is somewhat um, unbalanced vertically. Otherwise, this looks pretty good, as is, but I still want to fill all the screen up. So, we're going to hit select, well, hold select, and then tap X. Now, this is the quick menu of RetroArch. What we're going to do now is go to Core Options. In here, go down to Video, and then go down again to Crop. Now, so you can switch this over to automatic or any of the other options. And what it does is basically slice off the outside of the screen and then makes it bigger. Just uh, back out now. Quick menu and then resume. You can see now it fills the whole screen. 85 FPS. Ah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. But it's still running at, yeah, about 80% performance. Not great. So now if we go back into the menu, hold select and X again, what we want to do is go back into the core options. Once we're in the core options, go down to system. In here we have a few options. The first option is automatic floppy. If you give the system an ADF zipped up, it'll automatically load an A500, which is a 1.3, it's basically bog standard A500 with one meg. If you go down to automatic HD, this is a system that loads up if you have a WHD load install. As you can see, it's an A1200 with was it 2 meg chip and 8 meg flash. The thing is, the A1200 chipset actually has AGA, which is much more demanding than the regular A500, A500 Plus, or A600. So what we're going to do is flip that over to doo -doo -doo -doo, A600, and then press A. Now that's set, we're going to back out, go to Manage Core Options, 
and then save contact directory. Boop. And now this setting is saved for all Amiga games. Yes, it won't load the AGA versions, but if you want an AGA game where you can just flick it over to A1200 and then use the save game option at the top. So now what we're gonna do is uh, back out again, back out, back out again, and go to quit. One thing to note that most of the best Amiga games are actually non-AGA, so you don't need that for most of the time, especially for these classics like Lotus 2, Turrican 2, and things like that. So if we boot this up again, much better. Let's try a couple more titles. I think what we can do is actually change one of these buttons to actually jump. If we go to controls, Port one controls, here we go. Um, is it this one? Let's change this one to up. Up, oh, there, there is. Up, and then the remap files. And now we're gonna save this to this game. So save game remap file. Let's try that. A. I think if B and Y was switched, that would be much easier to control, but otherwise, pretty good. Very playable. Okay, gym power always trips up emulation. Let's try this. Um, this ain't full speed. Let's try giving it some frame skip. So you go to core options and then video. And it should be down here somewhere. Where is it? Mm, 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 mm. There we go, okay. Yeah. Frame skip one. Yeah. It's a bit better, but still not really that playable. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully you can play a few more games better. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandory, and I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra!